time of the year to be thankful in the NFL is coming up this week as Thanksgiving will bring us the usual doubleheader between the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys, not facing each other, each hosting their own individual home games this coming Thursday. We've also got a slate of Sunday games coming up with the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the New York Giants. Without their starting quarterback, Joe Burrow, the number one overall pick, suffered a torn ACL this past Sunday against the Washington football team. The question is, when will Joe Burrow return? Will he return in time for 2021, midway through 2021, or do the Bengals elect to hold him out for the rest of the season next season and then just play him in 2022? We're going to talk about that and much more on this brand new episode of Time 2 Football, including Week 12 news and notes going into this week of football. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Time to Football. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. Something that's also coming up on this show later on, since it is Thanksgiving, we want to get into the Thanksgiving spirit. We thought we'll mention every single team, every NFL team, and one individual thing that they're thankful for uh, for this 2020 NFL season. It's going to be lots of fun. It's Thanksgiving. We thought we'd just get everybody the day off. We're going to go out of town pretty soon. My hot brunette wife is looking at me and wanting to wrap up this podcast. She's actually in the room right now. She wants to grab lunch. So she's like, hurry up. Just just get this podcast rolling, film it, and we need to go and uh, leave out of town. So this podcast is actually going to be a very short edition or a shorter edition. I don't know if it's going to be around 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so, but uh, it won't be usual 45-hour-long podcast that you see every single week. You're going to notice a chat on YouTube. Ask any sort of questions that you guys want. I'll be in the chat. I'll try my absolute best. I'll be in and out of the chat. And you can ask any sort of questions that you have for fantasy football because we've got lots of action coming up on Thursday. You guys want to get your uh, your team set. You guys got a lot of players that play on the Texans and, and the Lions game and also in the Cowboys and Washington game. So if you have any sort of questions, I'm here in the chat to help you guys out. And if you guys are listening to this on the audio experience on iTunes, just know that we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football. Jump up on there. We, we come out with much more content every single week on our YouTube channel. And if you don't want to listen to or watch an hour long, 30 minute video, however long it is on YouTube, just go over to the podcast app, listen to us on the go, rate and review our podcast, five stars, nothing less. We have much to talk about in a very short amount of time on this episode. But first, before we get in it and get into everything, we have to give our most prestigious award to a player every single week, and that is the hungriest player of the week. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. If you guys watch this weekly show every week, you know that we don't give this to uh, the best player, the, the one with the best stats, the one that uh, just had all these great numbers week in and week out. No, we give this to a player that is very underrated, that is overlooked every single week. An honorable mention was Taysom Hill. He was an honorable mention. I thought about him because the hungriest player of the week is awarded to someone that takes the most of their opportunities that is given to them, the one that plays hungry. But instead, I figured everybody's going to be, be talking about Taysom Hill. I figured that the check down, the NFL's Instagram account that stole this award from me in 2019 when I came up with this award in 2013, I haven't checked who their hungriest player of the week is just yet, but I bet it's going to be Taysom Hill. So instead, I'm going to name someone that is a little bit more underneath the radar that deserves a lot of credit this week. Respect the specs. Rodrigo Blankenship, the Indianapolis Colts kicker, is deserving of the Hungriest Player of the Week award. Four out of five of his field goals converted. He missed a field goal earlier in the game. The Colts were down 14-28. to No hope, it seemed like, for the Indianapolis Colts. But Phillip Rivers and the Colts offense just continued to march down the field. And that's where Blankenship continued to shine. Because when the Colts couldn't get to the end zone... He, got, he converted field goal after field goal after field goal, gave the Colts a chance in this game. They tied it up, went into overtime against the Green Bay Packers in a thrilling game. And that's where Blankenship came out, kicked a 39-yard game-winning field goal against the Green Bay Packers and led the Indianapolis Colts to a victory against one of the better teams in the NFL. And that is why Rodrigo Blankenship is this week's hungriest player of the week. Much deserving, Hot Rod deserves that award. 
It is week 12 of the National Football League. What we do every week is we recap all the news and notes going into this week's slate of games. Starting off with the most important news, breaking news that we just got before we started filming this episode, and that is that the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers game that was scheduled for Thursday night football, Thanksgiving night, has been pushed back because of all the COVID-19 issues that the Baltimore Ravens have been dealing with, and this game will not be happening on Thursday night. Instead, what is happening on Thursday night is absolutely nothing, so enjoy that time with your friends and family. Christian McCaffrey is likely out yet again, but he will be practicing this week. Given that he is practicing this week, that does not mean that he's a clear-cut uh, favorite to start this week against the Minnesota Vikings. Instead, Christian McCaffrey, they want to play it safe. He's already been hurt earlier this year with, an, with a high ankle sprain. He has an AC joint problem in his shoulder right now, so they want to play it safe. The Carolina Panthers do. And if they can get away with starting with Mike Davis and Curtis Samuel at the running back position, they're going to go ahead and go with that. Rest Christian McCaffrey for the Week 13 bye, and then Week 14, go guns blazing, get Christian McCaffrey loose, get him out on that field. Another player that's been injured, Austin Eckler at the running back position, designated to return from IR. His status for this Sunday is is unknown. We don't know if Austin Eckler will be returning in this week's game for the uh, LA Chargers against the Buffalo Bills, but it is promising to know that they have activated him um, off of IR or designated him. There's there's a difference. They've designated him to return. He has a 21-day practice window where he can be practicing, and then the Chargers are going to make the difference or going to make the decision to see if Austin Eckler is capable to play this week for the LA Chargers would be a game changer if he can. Another running back that is hurt. There's just going to be running back after running back after running back that we talk about. Chris Carson practiced fully and will likely play against the Philadelphia Eagles. This was on Tuesday that he practiced in full on that Monday night game that's coming up this uh, next week. Chris Carson is likely to play for the Seattle Seahawks against the Philadelphia Eagles, going back to his workhorse role with Carlos Hyde in the mix as well. The 49ers have activated Raheem Mostert from IR. Has dealt with a couple of bit of injuries uh, this season. Raheem Mostert, this is encouraging to see that the 49ers have Raheem Mostert as a possibility to play this week for the San Francisco 49ers. They've been dealing with a lot of running back injuries with Tevin Coleman, Jamichael Hastie on, on IR as well. Jarek McKinnon, it seems like every week he's not on or back to full strength just yet. So Raheem Mostert will be a difference maker for the San Francisco 49ers. Going into the quarterback news, starting in place for Joe, Joe Burrow, which we're going to be talking about later on in the podcast, Brandon Allen, who has been a starter in the NFL before for the Denver Broncos, will be starting this week instead of what we presume to be Ryan Finley. Brandon Allen will be starting in place of Joe Burrow this week against the New York Giants. The Bills activated Josh Norman, the cornerback, from the COVID-19 list. He hasn't played week six or since week six because of him being on that COVID-19 list, but also with him dealing with a hamstring injury. So the fact that he's been activated right now or designated to return off that COVID-19 list is good news for that Bills defense against the LA Chargers. The Steelers can be the first team to clinch a playoff spot if they were to win this game against the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday and the, the Las Vegas Raiders and the Miami Dolphins both were to lose their game. So the, the Steelers, who are undefeated, can clinch a playoff spot guaranteed if they go 11-0 and then they suffer the losses the Raiders and the Miami Dolphins do. On the flip side, a team that's not having the greatest amount of success, you go from 10-0 to 0-10. The New York Jets are the first team that has been mathematically eliminated from the NFL playoffs. That happened last week with their loss and then other teams winning um, some games as well. So the Jets, I know, powerhouse New York Jets, favorited to uh, go on to the Super Bowl, will no longer have a chance to make the NFL playoffs. And then finally, we want to wrap it up with the uh, Hall of Fame. The the semi-finalists for the Hall of Fame have been announced, and some modern era uh, finalists that you guys might be familiar with would be Peyton Manning, Calvin Johnson, Charles Woodson, Jared Allen, Rondé Barber, Alan Fanica, Rodney Harrison, Torrey Holt, John Lynch, Richard Seymour, Fred Taylor, Zach Thomas, Heinz Ward, and Patrick Willis. All modern era finalists, semi-finalists for the Hall of Fame. That's not set in stone just yet. They're going to break that down, break that list down even further 
uh, and we're going to have less and less players making it in. But those are some modern era players that you guys might be familiar with. That was announced earlier this week. Moving on to the topics for today's show. First off, we wanted to talk about Joe Burrow and the injury that he suffered. We were watching that game uh, on NFL Red Zone, and it was a very gruesome injury with Joe Burrow suffering an ACL injury. You could see in a slow motion that his knee kind of popped, and it did not look promising at all. So Joe Burrow is out for the remainder of the season. What we're going to talk about, though, is what does that mean for the Cincinnati Bengals moving forward, and not just for the Bengals, but also for Joe Burrow's future with the Bengals. So what I mean by that is that he tore his ACL late in the season. Okay, It's late November, almost December, and the fact that he tore it now is not good news. If you were to tear, tear your ACL at all in the NFL season, you'd want it to be more so towards the beginning of the NFL season so that you have a chance to recover and come back fully for the start of the 2021 NFL season. However, this could be a year-long injury. Joe Burrow could sit out until November of next season. So it's almost guaranteed that the Bengals are going to have to come up with a plan for a backup quarterback. And maybe Brandon Allen is that plan. Maybe Ryan Finley is that plan. We don't know. But going into 2021, for the start of it, we presume that Joe Burrow will not be the starting quarterback for week one of 2021. However, we have seen in the past of players that have suffered ACL injuries that just have these Superman recoveries and they're able to just come back and, and, and just be wonderful. We saw it with Adrian Peterson uh, a year removed from his or a year prior to his MVP season. He suffered an ACL injury, came back, was the MVP of the NFL. So it, it's not out of the question. He came back early. It can happen. So Joe Burrow... That could happen, depending on his rehab and his recovery process, but it's not likely. So what does that mean for the Cincinnati Bengals, knowing that you're going to be without Joe Burrow? Well, mathematically, you're still alive in the NFL playoff hunt. However, you have little to no chance with the NFL playoffs. Uh, so it, it, it might be just a decision at that point for Zach Taylor and the Bengals front office as well to just bite the bullet and just be like, hey, we know we're not going to make the NFL playoffs. So we're alive, but a lot of stuff has to happen. We have to win out, and then other teams have to lose out. And it's just almost near impossible for us to make the NFL playoffs. Uh, I'll give you an example. If some of you guys are fantasy football fans, I'll explain my fantasy football uh, journey this season for 2021 or 2020. And that's that if you've been watching this show for week after week, I've been explaining about the injuries that I've been having on my fantasy football team. I drafted Saquon Barkley. I drafted Odell Beckham, Le'Veon Bell, who got fired. I had Debo Samuel. Dallas Goddard was out for a long period of time, and uh, it, it, it's just been a bad season. And even though mathematically right now, two weeks away from the fantasy playoffs, I'm still alive to make, or I have a chance to make the fantasy playoffs. I know for sure I'm more than likely not going to make it. I have to win out and then other people have to lose. And it's just, uh, I have less than a 1% chance of making the fantasy playoffs. So what, what I decided to do is I decided to make a bunch of trades and I decided to help my team out in preparing, okay, I'm not going to make the playoffs. We have a loser's bracket. And what we can do is if we win more games in the loser's bracket, that helps our chances for a draft pick next season. So I just made some trades. I'm still playing fantasy football. I'm still encouraging and, and, and uh, or being encouraged and, and, and playing well in, in fantasy football and uh, trying to help build my team to be the best it can be so that I can get a next or a, an amazing draft pick next season. And I think that's what the Cincinnati Bengals should do. Just go down that route of preparing for 2021, not worry about the NFL playoffs this season and just move forward, look ahead to 2021 and come up with our plan and see if, Bri if Brandon Allen or Ryan Finley can be the replacement for the beginning or the first half of the 2021 season. Next year, will Joe Burrow be back? I don't know. And it might be that he could be fully recovered by October or November. But you got to make a decision at that point. Do you sit him out for the remainder of the season and just look forward to 2022? You could have two rebuilding seasons, and it might not be ideal for the Bengals, who had a promising offense, it seemed like, with three great wide receivers and up-and-coming quarterback and a great run game as well with Joe Mixon. 
you, you just got to work with what you got. And I think for the future and the long sense, it, sh- it might be best for Joe Burrow just to sit out for the whole entire 2021 season. Uh, that was a similar situation to Andrew Luck, where Andrew Luck was expected to be playing when he was injured preseason. I believe it was 2017 for that season. We thought he was going to be playing for the Indianapolis Colts. Like, oh, yeah, he'll be back in week one. No problem. Then it comes down to week two, week three, week four. Oh, no, just give it a couple more weeks, a couple more weeks. Play, place him on short-term IR. Oh, well, that means he's out until week eight at least. And then all of a sudden, he just doesn't play at all, all season long, and he just missed the whole entire 2017 season. That same situation could happen with Joe Burrow. But if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, interact with us. Leave your comments. In the chat, leave your comments down below. What do you think that the the Cincinnati Bengals should be doing with Joe Burrow? What is the smartest move? And what do you believe is going to happen for the Cincinnati Bengals? We are going to continue progressing in this podcast with uh, naming one thing that each NFL team is very thankful for. I'm excited about that. It's going to be lots of fun. But first, before we get into that, we have to give a quick shout out to Manscaped. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. Untrimmed untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I'm talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. This has helped me out so, so much in my own personal life. I'll just leave it at that. That's why this revolutionary company, Manscaped, has designed the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 3.0 comes inside their brand new pa- Perfect Package 3.0, which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. And don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls. That's just nasty. The Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 also includes the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Yes, your balls stink. Let's admit it. Everybody's balls stink. Speaking of sweaty and stinky balls, I am thankful for the Crop Reviver. This product along with the Crop Preserver keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking. Really? I need to try that out. And these products smell good. Their manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood, if you know what I mean. The Perfect Package will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxers that will keep your junk feeling fresh all day. They're ventilated. I don't know what it is about them, the material, but air just flows right through it and it's amazing. Tis the season to Manscape and to get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Get 20% off. The Time of Football Faithful, the Time of Followers, can get 20% off and free shipping with the code T2F at Manscaped.com. So click that link in the description of this video and use the promo code T, the number two, the letter F, for 20% off and free shipping. Trust me, your balls will thank you. Moving on to... Another topic on the show to get into the Thanksgiving spirit. I thought it'd be fun to mention one thing that each NFL team is thankful for this holiday season. Okay, so we're going to be mentioning every NFL team. It's going to be fun. It's going to be light humor. I'm going to be taking jabs. All right, but it's all light. It's nothing too crazy. So don't get sensitive. Don't get offended. I don't hate your team. I'm not biased. Okay, if anyone should be sensitive or offended, it's me when you guys comment. Right now, comment down below 28 to 3 because I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan. So make me offended, make me sensitive, and uh, make me mad when you guys comment that, and then we'll be even. All right. So, first up, we have the Arizona Cardinals. One thing that the Cardinals are thankful for the Cardinals are thankful for quarterbacks that look like toddlers when they run. Kyler Murray, I don't know what it is about him, his running style just makes him really, really fast. MVP candidate, the Cardinals are very thankful for him, despite the way that he runs. The Atlanta Falcons, thankful for the two weeks that they get with Julio every single year. Man, injury, then not injured, then injured, then not injured, and now we're in the process of him being injured. He's a game-time decision this Sunday coming up. So, Julio, thankful for the two weeks. Baltimore Ravens, thankful for running back depth with J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram both out. 
It's a picture of Lamar Jackson, so I think you guys can make the connection. So why not just put Lamar Jackson in this game against the Pittsburgh Steelers at running back, and then you can get the GOAT, the meme on TikTok, Trace McSorley in at quarterback. I think that'd be pretty cool for the Baltimore Ravens to do. The Buffalo Bills, much like the Ravens, thankful for running back depth at quarterback. Josh Allen just seems like he's doing it all. Doing it all. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, no, they don't lead the team in rushing or even carries at that point for that matter, it's Josh Allen, their quarterback. The Carolina Panthers, thankful for players sucking with Adam Gase so they can sign somewhere else and do well. There's a picture of Robbie Anderson, so I'm pretty sure you guys can make the connection right there. It's Robbie Anderson, it's Devontae Parker, it's Ryan Tannehill, uh, it's Kenyon Drake. There's so many examples of players getting out of the reins of Adam Gase and doing well, and Robbie Anderson just made the Carolina Panthers thankful for Adam Gase. The Chicago Bears. Thankful for. You know, this is the same exact slide that I used last season. I did the same exact thing last season in an episode of Time to Football. And the same thing for the Chicago Bears. I did not write anything at all. Because I could not think of anything that they were thankful for. So, thankful for. Let's just leave it at that. The Cincinnati Bengals. Thankful for the three good games that they get out of Joe Mixon. Every single year. That's right. For you guys that own Joe Mixon of fantasy football, you guys can, uh, this this one hits home for you guys. That one three touchdown game that he had earlier this season, that panned out, was against the Jaguars, I feel like, or I believe it was against the Jaguars. The Joe Mixon did well in that game, and then after that, just kind of fizzled out and really didn't do much. And now you're just going to have to hope that you get him just in time for the fantasy football playoff. So, Three good games. Joe Mixon, thank you for those three good games this season. The Cleveland Browns, thankful for bad weather, making their secondary look better than it actually is against the Raiders, uh, against the Eagles. This was supposed to be more of a high-scoring game on the Eagles' side or on the Raiders' side because the secondary has given up a lot of big plays this season. But thankful for the uh, bad weather, the, the Cleveland Browns' defense being the beneficiary of that bad weather. The Dallas Cowboys... Thankful for the NFC East. What a division. What a division. The Denver Broncos. Thankful for the Chargers not being able to finish games. Yes, I am referring to that one game-winning touchdown to KJ Hamler from Drew Locke against the Chargers. But it was not just that. The Chargers have also been on the uh, other end of some uh, blown leads or some given up or, or last minute plays just causing them to lose games. Anthony Lynn and the Chargers have. So uh, the Broncos, Broncos are thankful for that one trait because it helped them pick up a victory against the Chargers earlier this season. The Detroit Lions, thankful for Matt Patricia for some reason. I would be surprised if he retains his head coaching job at the end of the season. So uh, Lions, thankful for Matt Patricia. The Green Bay Packers, Thankful for not needing to draft help for Aaron Rodgers because Devontae Adams. That was a huge deal. Everybody was like, they need a wide receiver on that team. Got Jordan Love instead. Didn't get any wide receiver help in that draft. And now we see why. Because Devontae Adams is the go-to guy for Aaron Rodgers. And not just the go-to guy, but the every go-to guy or every play guy, it seems like, for that matter, is Devontae Adams. The Houston Texans, thankful for the mess that they have to clean up. Caused by Bill O'Brien. Oh my gosh. No draft picks in the first round. In the second round, they couldn't deal any of their big-time players like Will Fuller or Brandon Cooks away. And uh, they have no draft capital in the early rounds, it seems like. So, Bill O'Brien, thankful for uh, for for what you've done for Houston. That's, this is sarcasm, by the way. The Indianapolis Colts. Thankful for Alpha Tools making fun of nerdy kickers so he can be motivated to make the NFL with his big, for, for with his well endowed energy. What we're talking about the hungriest player of the week, Rodrigo Blankenship. All the guys that made fun of him growing up for wearing glasses with the helmets, for being nerdy, for being skinny. He proved people wrong, and now he's a big time kicker for the Indianapolis Colts, and he helped them beat the Green Bay freaking Packers. So you, Rodrigo Blankenship, hot rod, are the freaking man. Jacksonville Jaguars, thankful for Doug Marone for some reason. Again, just like the Detroit Lions. I don't know why Doug Marone was not let go last season, but, uh, you know, according to him, it's Gardner Minshew's fault for the lack of success. All of his fault. 
nothing else. The Kansas City Chiefs, thankful for the Chiefs being so good that no one has noticed that Harrison Butker has missed six extra points this season. You may not believe it. One of the best kickers in the NFL has missed six extra points. No one talks about it. His job is under under fire because it didn't help them lose any games or didn't cause them to lose any games. So Harrison Butker still retains his starting kicker position. I mentioned that because I'm kind of salty, and I know that because Harrison Butker is my kicker on fantasy football, and I've lost three games this season because of missed extra points by Harrison Butker. If he just converted those, I would have won. The Las Vegas Raiders, thankful for not moving on from Derek Carr, even though they low-key wanted to. They may deny it all they want. Mike Mayock, John Gruden may say, no, Derek Carr is our quarterback, but there's been rumors, there's been insiders, and they wanted to move on with Derek Carr. I'm pretty sure that they're thankful right now that Derek Carr is their starting quarterback. The Los Angeles Chargers, thankful for COVID-19, allowing little to no fans to attend NFL games, so the internet can't make fun of their lack of a fan base. Last year, we mentioned the Los Angeles Chargers in this thankful segment, and we mentioned how they have almost no fan base. And now COVID-19 is drowning that out and nobody's talking about it because there's no fans in the stands. The Los Angeles Rams, a team that does have a fan base, thankful for Best Buy for inspiration. This has been a trending topic. You can mention Ikea as well for the uh, inspiration for their uniforms. The Miami Dolphins, thankful for the seventh playoff seed because man, oh man, that is the... Big difference maker for them making the NFL playoffs this year. Brian Flores, very underrated head coach, has been doing very well this season. And it's between them and the Tennessee Titans right now for who's going to get the 6th or 7th seed. So the Miami Dolphins are very thankful for that 7th seed. The Minnesota Vikings, thankful for that one Lizzo song being the reason why Hassan's hot brunette wife knows who the Minnesota Vikings are. Is that true? Yeah, she's she's nodding in agreement. It is very true. The New England Patriots, thankful for the success of Tom Brady because the Pats fans have actually been fans of Tom Brady this whole time, not the Patriots. And you may deny it all you want. And for you guys that are loyal Patriots fans, I commend you because you guys are freaking awesome. I don't care if you're a loyal Patriots fan and you started being a Patriots fan in 20 freaking 11 when they've already had three Super Bowls under the belt. That's cool. As long as you stay a Patriots fan, I'm cool with that. But I know people, and I'm not going to mention any names, that have been Patriots fans in the past, and now all of a sudden they're Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans, and they have nothing to do with the Tampa or the New England Patriots. Never talk about them. Never watch their games. It's all about Tom Brady. So, just telling it how it is. New Orleans Saints fans, thankful for Roddy White. If you have no idea what I'm referring to, Roddy White has had a a, a fantastic history with the New Orleans Saints. The one time. Uh, great wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. Just recently, when the Falcons took on the Saints, he made fun, fun of the Saints for starting Taysom Hill at quarterback. And then Taysom Hill destroys, destroys the Atlanta Falcons, and Sean Payton retweets Roddy White's tweet, making fun of the New Orleans Saints after they defeat the Atlanta Falcons. So, Roddy White, thank you for the motivation to the New Orleans Saints. The New York Giants, thankful for the NFC East. What a division. The New York Jets, thankful for it being week 12, and Adam Gase is still the head coach of the Jets. How does this happen? There are some rare things that can occur in this world, and Adam Gase being the head coach of the New York Jets currently right now is one of those rare things. The Philadelphia Eagles, thankful for the NFC East. What a division. The Pittsburgh Steelers, thankful for for drafting another good wide receiver with a vlog so they can collab. I don't know what it is about Juju Smith-Schuster or Chase Claypool. They both have big followings on YouTube. They both come out with YouTube videos every single week, and they both collab. So for you guys that are up-and-coming wide receivers going into the NFL, just create a YouTube channel, create a vlog, and then the Pittsburgh Steelers will draft you. It's usually how it goes. The San Francisco 49ers, thankful for preseason football this year so players are conditioned and decrease the risk of injury. Awaits. The Seattle Seahawks, thankful for bubble yum. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, thankful for unlimited money. I, I mean, how? How? How are they doing this? 
One guy signs with the team, and then all of a sudden, everybody wants to sign with that team. The Tennessee Titans, thankful that special teams has to be a part of football. Oh my gosh, special teams has been... What a ride for the Tennessee Titans on special teams. With the kicker position, with Steven Kosowski early on, still here and there, missing some kicks for them. And then the punter situation recently with Trevor Daniel and Kern just now coming back and being the the starting punter, punter, it seems like, for the Titans. So... Special teams, it's pretty pretty rough. And then last, we're going to go with the uh, Washington football team. Last and definitely least, thankful for the NFC East. And that will wrap it up with the teams that, uh, or one thing that each NFL team is thankful for this holiday season. Moving on to the last segment, we've got fan questions. You guys submit your fan questions to us in the YouTube comments of the Storts and Sits videos. I savage or salvage through these YouTube comments, just bob and weave past these Asian bots that are just commenting after or comment after comment after comment on these videos. Just savage through that to pick out you guys and your questions. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to have your questions answered on this show. First one, we're going to answer a question from username Chow. Pick one for flex. Jonathan Taylor, Gio Bernard, or Chase Claypool. So, Chase Claypool, man, I love him. He's a good wide receiver. The thing is, I just don't trust the Pittsburgh wide receiver core. Because, yeah, all three wide receivers could go off. Like that game against the Dallas Cowboys, it seemed like all three wide receivers did fairly well. But then last week, you had that game against the Jacksonville Jaguars where Deontay Johnson seemed like a number one wide receiver. Chase Claypool got a touchdown, but then Juju Smith-Schuster was kind of left high and dry. So at that point, it's a coin toss with Pittsburgh wide, wide receivers. And if I had a Pittsburgh wide receiver as my wide receiver too, yeah, I would start him if I had no other choice. Absolutely, if the matchup is great because that offense is very high-powered. Why wouldn't you, Why wouldn't you give your Pittsburgh Steelers uh, wide receivers a chance, but if I could refrain from that and pick someone else, someone like Jonathan Taylor, I would go with that. I know that Colts running back committee approach can be a coin toss as well, but I trust Jonathan Taylor, who just got 22 carries last week against the Green Bay Packers, much more than Chase Claypool. So I would start Jonathan Taylor. Good intentions, comments, T. Higgins, A.B. or Rager. Love his avatar, by the way. I'm going to go with A.B. on this one. Rager has kind of sort of been a letdown as of late. He's been getting the targets, but this offense with Carson Wentz just needs to get more in rhythm. Okay, this they just need to be in rhythm for me to trust Rager moving forward. With T. Higgins, we know the quarterback change right now with Brandon Allen. I wouldn't drop Higgins just yet, but keep him for now. Put him on your bench. A.B., however, has been seeing many targets from Tom Brady as of late, and that's why I would put your trust in into Antonio Brown. Rosemary Brown, who has watched the show in the past, has commented and chatted with us before. She says, pick or asks, pick two, full PPR, Wayne Gallman, Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, or Juju Smith-Schuster. I just explained about Juju Smith-Schuster. It's a coin toss. So if I can stay away from him, I would. Sterling Shepard is one of my starts of the week. And that's why I would pick him If I had to choose between him or Juju Smith-Schuster, it's going to be Sterling Shepard. Even between him and Darius Slayton, Slayton has had cold games and hot games here and there, while Shepard, since he's come back, has been consistent. So I would pick Shepard over any of those wide receivers. And that leaves one more spot open for you, and that's why I would pick Wayne Gallman. Grew up uh, just 10 minutes away from me, watched him play in Greece in high school. Very underrated back. Wayne Gallman has a good matchup against Cincinnati, and I would start him and Sterling Shepard on the New York Giants against the Cincinnati Bengals. This next one, XD Cone Life comments. Should I drop Ravens defense for Saints? So thankfully, with that game getting pushed back, you have an extra three days to see this uh, before you make that decision. But yes, I would drop the Ravens defense against over the Saints if I had the opportunity. Just because the Ravens defense has been a little bit of a letdown as of late in the last two games against the Patriots, which they were supposed to be doing well against. And then the Tennessee Titans. So they prove that they're not matchup proof. However, with the Saints, they've had maybe one or two bad games this season, but that's about it. They're the fourth best defense in the NFL right now as far as fantasy points this season. So I would roll with the New Orleans Saints who have a pretty good schedule 
as well in the fantasy football playoffs. Uh, this next one, Sam Grimm has also been uh, commenting on this video b- or on these podcasts before. All righty, Matty Ice or Taysom Hill? I'm going to go ahead and go with Matt Ryan. I got a lot of hate in the comment section with one guy even threatening to never watch my videos again because I stated that Matt Ryan is a start uh, this week against the Las Vegas Raiders. But I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, you can trust Matt Ryan with or without Julio Jones. It's going to be Russell Gage that steps up in the place of of Julio Jones or maybe even Hayden Hurst, uh, who a couple games back had a a good showing with Julio Jones hurt. And I trust him much more than Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was good for the tight end position. He did well, so congratulations to you guys. You more than likely picked up a win if you started Taysom Hill at tight end because you had two quarterbacks in ESPN. But this offense, when I was watching that game, the way that Taysom Hill throws, he he was he was accurate, but I I, I kind of clinched every time I saw him throw. I was like, oh man, this could be an interception. And there were a few plays that could have been interceptions. So uh, I know the rushing ability is there for Taysom Hill, and other Denver Broncos pass defense has not been the greatest, but I like the matchup with Matt Ryan, someone I trust way more, and against a defense that's much weaker uh, and, and has a better matchup than Taysom Hill. George Alamonis comments, pick two, Shepard, Taylor, Montgomery, Swift. Montgomery, I don't think he's going to be playing this week. Maybe he will with with that bye week. Maybe he's going to be recovering fully. And But even with that, I, I still don't trust him. I, I really don't. He had great opportunities to excel when the matchups were when the matchups were right, and he didn't. So I I don't trust Matt Montgomery until he were to step it up, and then you can put him into your starting lineup. For Swift, there is a possibility he does play on Thursday, but I mean I I doubt it. I really do. And this is coming from DeAndre Swift owners. I've been keeping tabs on this, so I don't I don't think that Swift is going to be playing. Uh, that leaves Shepard and Taylor at that point, which I would start, um, which was one of my two picks earlier in another question, but if Swift does play, yeah, absolutely. I would play uh, Taylor and Swift in that aspect. So uh, I would roll in that, in those situations. That's what I would do. This last one is from Taj Prasad. Start Rams defense or the Dolphins. The Dolphins have been great. The Rams have been great. If you need to pick a defense for the remainder of the season, it's going to be the LA Rams because of the fantasy football playoffs and the schedule that they have. They've been great. And, for this week, however, I'm going to go ahead and put my trust in the Dolphins. So the Rams are the better option long term, but the Dolphins for this week against the New York Jets, I like my odds there. Because against the San Francisco 49ers with Debo Samuel returning, with Raheem Mostert being activated off of IR, I feel like this, uh, we've seen it in the past, Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers offense can get very creative. And that could be trouble for the Rams. So uh, pick the Dolphins at least for this week over the Rams. And that'll do it for this episode of Time 2 Football. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment down below. Uh, Subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with more weekly shows every single week. And if you guys are listening to us on iTunes, thank you for uh, listening to us all this whole entire time, whether it be on your uh, travels during the uh, holiday weekend or uh, whenever it may be. Thank you for, for listening to us. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, rate and review, and go check us out. Check us out on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash time to football, and uh, get much more content on there as well. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this podcast or even listening to this podcast. It's week 12 of the National Football League 2020 NFL season, and Adam Gase is still the head coach of the New York Jets. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.